Hello, my name is Tracy Ann Oberman and I'm going to read you a short story in support of the National Hospital. Um, I'm delighted to support this initiative because they looked after my friend Jacob Kruchewski so well when he was ill and I hope you'll consider supporting as well. I'm going to read you the beginnings of a short story from um, a book that I picked up in a second-hand bookshop many years ago and I've only just discovered it today so this is all rather fortuitous. It's called Poor Women by Nora Holt and it was written in the sort of late 1990s, 1919, 1920 um, and it's by a writer called Nora Holt who I think had a really distinctive voice which is why I like it so much. Um, this is a story called Ethel and here is the first few pages for you. Enjoy. Mrs. Ethel Stone shut her bedroom door unobtrusively and sat down in front of the dressing table. Her light blue eyes became cold and appraising as she examined her face in the mirror. But the front view, she decided, was really rather good. Her skin had kept wonderfully, only the faintest wrinkles under the eyes. No one would think she was 38, unless they were the kind of people who put years on just out of spite. That lemon-flavoured cream was really excellent, even if it did cost four and a six a jar. But 38 was only two years off 40. Still, it was no good thinking like that. I must remember, she told herself, to blot the figure 38 right out of my mind. Perhaps it would help if I put another figure definitely before myself, say 30. No, that's too obvious. 32, yes. 32 is all right, mature and finished and yet young. But the thing is, I must believe I am 30. We get old because we keep remembering our ages. Why shouldn't I be 32 if I think I am? She stopped to rummage in her mind for a quotation from Mrs Besant, which she seemed to recollect bore out what she was thinking. But it failed her. Her new thought phase had been over three years ago, and she had not, after the first few lectures, taken it too seriously, since she had found that the average man was not impressed by new thought. Most of the men she had told about the great spiritual help it was proving to her had smiled with some superiority uh, and had told her it was a typical feminine weakness. And that line didn't suit her style one bit. She preferred being told, as Billy had told her once, that she was an essentially masculine mind in an irresistible female body. So she dropped new thought. And now it had eluded her when it might have been some use. But there was the Kue score, of course. They were on her side. She rose suddenly and surveyed herself in the long glass in the wardrobe with a smile which she mentally described as tantalising. I am 32, she murmured brightly to the looking glass. Her shoulders were good too. She caressed one with her hand, so soft and warm and white. She rarely beheld her flesh without feeling regret for the lovers who would have appreciated it so. It was bitter to think how she was being wasted. She, who had had such good times, well, she was determined she would have them again. Just a little management. Her new black marocaine frock was certainly a success. What a mercy black suited her. What a mercy. There would have been no getting out if it hadn't, in the circumstances. Ethel, called her mother at the foot of the stairs. Mrs Stone frowned and was about to answer simply. Then she checked herself. Coming, mother dear, she called back, with a pleasant, if suitably subdued note in her voice. And after passing the powder puff over her face, she went. Her mother was in the dining room setting the tea. You have been a time, dear, she said without looking up. You know he's due any minute. Ethel sat down in the red plush armchair and sighed. Well, I hurried over dressing, she said, because I wanted to help you. But I couldn't help thinking of poor little Dick. Did she look as if she'd been crying? No, the powder. Couldn't do without that at any cost. Well, I mean, I, I wanted to have a good cry, she went on, but I wouldn't give way. But sometimes, Mother, sometimes, I don't know how I can go on. 
Mrs. Wright poured out lump sugar from a bright blue bag into a sugar bowl. With the bag tucked under her arm, she crossed to her daughter and patted her on the back of her shoulder. No, oh, there, my dear. You must do your best to put your own grief in the background and comfort Richard when he comes. It'll be a great blow to him. I must say he's always showed himself a very good father. Ethel thought her mother was being particularly stupid. A funny sort of father deserting his son. But she merely sighed and looked in the blue flames of the gas fire. Time enough to say what she thought later. I mean, that it was always plain he was fond of the dear child, said Mrs Wright, feeling obscurely that Ethel did not altogether assent. Then she added, her colour slightly increasing, for she found speech on intimate matters difficult. I know it's a little awkward for you meeting him again after so many years, but things will surely come all right now. Ethel didn't reply. And after moving the cups and saucers and then moving them back again, Mrs Wright went into the kitchen feeling she had said too much. It was against her habit to touch upon her daughter's relations with her husband at all. Some things were better left unsaid, was one of her practical tenets, and as long as she had believed that Richard Stone was unable to live with his wife as a husband should, owing to the housing difficulty, he had sold up the house and furniture, Ethel said, because he wanted to go and paint in Italy. Well, that was all right. Then he had come back and received an offer to be a curator, as they call it, of the Castle Art Gallery at Battingham. And because it meant a regular salary and it was only right that he should, when he had a wife and child, he had taken the post. But that was four years ago. He ought to have got a house by now. Well, it wasn't her business. Ethel was never one for talking, not to her mother that was. But husband and wife ought to be together. And at such a time as this, when they had lost their only child... Please support the charity. It's a wonderful charity and it does amazing things. Thank you.